Our next speaker is uh, Chao Wei Xiao. Uh, Chao Wei is a research scientist uh, at NVIDIA and an uh, incoming assistant professor at uh, Arizona State University. His research interest lies at the intersection of computer security, privacy, and machine learning. His works has been featured in multiple media outlets, including Wild Fortune, I Trouble You Spectrum. One of his research output is now on display at the Science Museum in London. Uh, he has received the Best Paper Award at Mobicon 2014 and the ESWN 2021. And the floor is yours, shall we? Yeah, hi. Are you uh, able to share your screen? Oh, great. Uh, yeah, let me share my screen. Yeah, can, can you see my screen? Yeah, we can see it. Thanks. Oh, cool. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Uh, thanks for the introduction. Yeah, hello everyone. Today I will talk about the level three machine learning in the three D domain. Yeah, we all know deep learning is really good. It achieved great success. However, it also introduced the problem. So, for example, the autonomous driving relies the deep learning to detect the cars, lines, and other obstacles. However, in 2016, there is an accident caused by the autonomous driving cars and killed one person in Florida. After the investigation, the cause of this accident is the autonomous driving car system not designed to always detect the vehicles cutting in front with a left turn. So the reason why it has happened is that in traditional machine learning system, there is a strong assumption that the distribution of the training data are similar to the distribution of the test data. So based on these assumptions, we design our machine learning algorithms, assume that we collect some data labeled as benign and uh, malicious in these uh, examples. And we could split them into the training data and text data. We train a classifier, use the training data, and after the training, the classifier could predict the label given any arbitrary input. So if the test data is located in the distribution of the training data, then it could be predicted correctly. However, if there is a malware which is not located in the distribution of the training data, then the classifier has a probability to predict it as the benign, so it will evade the detection. Moreover, we live in the adversary environment. There are some bad guys behind the system which could manipulate the data. So I think I, I think you have already saw this uh, figure for multiple times today and uh, so, but um, before moving towards, uh, uh, let's recall these images. So let's recall why for our humans, uh, we could still recognize like uh, this uh, panda as like a panda. So the reason is because uh, here uh, where humans is insensitive to the small perturbations and here the perturbation is uh, bounded by the LP distance. So in these communities, as uh, early stage researchers use the LP as the uh, threat models to keep the perception realistic. So um, before we de de discuss the uh, adversary uh, examples in 3D domains, let's first see the reasonability of these threat models. So if we do a literature review at the early stage of this domain, almost all the advanced attack or defense methods are proposed based on, on these threat models. However, uh, before moving towards more advanced attack and defense methods, let's go back and think about the original question. Is the LP the only threat model for those examples? Definitely, LP is not the only threat model. The reason why we use it because it could be used to keep the perception realistic of the images, right? However, it could not um, measure the perception realistic really well for this. Term. For instance, let's say the left images. If we change the lightning, it will introduce a large magnitude in terms of L2 distance. Uh, and if we shift in the pixel positions, it will also introduce a large magnitude in terms of L infinities. But for our humans, we can both recognize these two images correctly. So this example shows that LP is not a really good matrix to evaluate the looks look like. So here the question is like beyond LP, how can we generate like other examples? 
So here we argue that the adverse examples should be the input which could be correctly recognized by the humans but mislead the machine learning models. So adverse example is proposed from the human perspective view and we need to have a target machine learning model system. This rephrase definitions provide us a general way to design our objective functions to generate adverse examples. So generally, in order to achieve this, we need to have two loss functions. One is adversary loss and the other is perceptual loss. So the adversary loss aims to fool the machine learning systems and the perceptual loss aims to make the adversary images correctly recognized by the humans. So with this new objective functions, we could simplify the generation pipeline as follows. So we have some blind input and we have a manipulation function. So we hope to manipulate this function to generate a new input and feed this new input into the machine learning model to get output. And we hope the output could be recognized as target label. Therefore, this output of the machine learning model could provide us the advocacy loss with respect to this manipulation functions. And at the same time, so we need to have some constraint for this manipula manipulation functions because we don't want the generated input uh, for the humans, right? So with this like a new like uh, general pipeline, uh, let's think about uh, uh, be, instead of adding the pixel uh, pixels perturbations, how can we generate uh, all of those examples? So here is an example. So we what we what we can do is we can move in the pixel positions. For example, we can change the pixel positions of these two cells, and this uh, operation can be represented by the flow. And the value of this flow can be uh, used to represent the pixel displacement. Cool. So this is like new manipulation functions, right? So with this new manipulation functions, we could generate new type of those examples. So for example, here we know that we hope to move the pixel positions to generate all those examples. Therefore, the parameter for us to optimize here is the flow. Given the flow and the original images, we could generate new images. And we want these new images to fool the machine learning model. Therefore, the output of the machine learning model could provide an adverse loss to optimize this flow. And also we need to constrain this flow, right? So we need to make the generated images still looks realistic to the humans. So in detail, we could use the hinge loss uh, as the uh, adversary loss. And also we should uh, constrain the uh, flows. For example, here we use a total, var total variance loss. The high level idea is we want the pixels move to the uh, adjacent pixels move towards the same directions with the same magnitude. So the extreme like case is all the pixels move towards to the same directions. So it's like shifting. So our humans are insensitive to this uh, uh, shifting. It still looks realistic to our humans. And so this is like a new generated uh, like uh, um, result. We can say the last row is like uh, this new type of like method. We can say that instead of the original method, which added the perturbation in the background, here, what we are doing is we moving the pixel positions. So for example, here we're moving the pixel positions of each digit and all of this one are predicted as a target label zero by the machine learning system. So cool, so here we can say that uh, uh, we can design some like a, a new method which instead of like uh, adding the pixel positions bound by the LP distance, here we can move in the pixel positions to generate all those examples. So now we can say that how can we like uh, uh, transfer this uh, moving pixel positions to generate adverse examples in 3D. Actually, we more care about the adverse example in the 3D space as we live in the 3D world to explore the feasibility of adverse example in 3D space. Uh, we need to discuss uh, it from the different type of uh, 3D resources, for example, uh, let's take the uh, autumn streaming as an example. So for the autumn streaming, it has the different sensors which can get a different type of information of the world. For example, we have the cameras, so we can get the images of the object, right? And we can also have some like uh, uh, LiDAR sensors, which we can also get the 3D object as the point cloud format for these systems. Right. So in order to start this adversary in 3D space, we should consider like both like uh, uh, like formulation format of the 3D object. Right. 
So here, for example, uh, let's uh, consider two types of like uh, uh, input. One is like a uh, uh, camera, another is uh, like that. So let's start from the camera. So for the in, uh, for the uh, in order to start with the um, camera based like three D advanced examples, first we what we need to do is we need need we need to know what the digital images comes from. Right? So the digital images comes from the 3D physical domain. In order to start it, we should simulate the photo taking process and need to know what are the components uh, in the 3D space, right? So generally speaking, the images are formed from the illumination, shape, and the texture information through a render process. So zero to generate 3D uh, or those examples, we could manipulate either these three like information. Right? There already has been significant like progress on generate physical possible those examples by altering the texture of the 3D surface, right? So for example, uh, it can apply advanced printable 2D patches uh, into this like a stop <laughs> learning systems, right? Uh, as we've seen before, like uh, uh, besides manipulating the texture information in 3D space, we could also manipulate the shape information to generate those examples. So here we wonder whether the shape is as robust as we think to define against those examples. So in order to do it, uh, uh, we explore the 3D object which has the uh, rich shape information but minimal texture vari variation and show that uh, we can still like uh, feel for the advanced goals by perturbing the shape of the 3D object. So our attack pipeline is as this follows. So here we simulate the like photo thinking process, right? So for example, uh, we have some like object, so we have like a camera, so we can do a photo taken. So here we use a renderer to simulate the functionality of the camera. And then we get this 2D images, and then we fit these images into the machine learning models uh, to do some recognition tasks. Right? So here is like uh, what we manipulate is we hope to manipulate the shape information of the images or the texture information of the images, right? So here we use, uh, in order to generate advanced uh, examples, uh, we need the all pipeline like uh, end to end, so which, which we need to make them differentiable, right? So here we use a differentiable render to do it. And we design our object function, which has advanced loss, which fools the machine learning models, and we have a perceptual loss, which we need to constrain the 3D shape, right? So we, because we still want it to look like the object, and it still like uh, we want it can be printable, right? So in detail, uh, in detail for the uh, in order to for the advanced loss, in order to attack classification, we can use some like cross entropy loss. In order to for the detection, we can use some like disappearance loss. And for the perception loss, uh, similar here, we can move in the like uh, vertex of the three D meshes of the shape, right? So we, we can also use a total 3D total variance loss, which the hello idea is also make the adjacent vertex moving towards the same direction with the same magnitude. So in this way, we can get a, like a smooth surface, which is a printable and still looks realistic to our humans. And uh, the result shows that uh, even in the, uh, even by perturb the 3D, uh, object uh, perturb the shape information, it can still fool the neural networks. As I mentioned before, so in order to generate the advanced example, uh, here we use a differentiable render. So a natural question is like, uh, can we transfer like this advanced examples into some black box render, which is non-differentiable and more complicated and more realistic? The reason is also yes, we can transfer our advanced examples into the black box render as well, which pave the way to like attack the physical like uh, environment. And here we also like transfer to attack the object detectors as well. So uh, as I mentioned, like uh, for the like uh, uh, autonomous driving system for the 3D space, uh, uh, camera is not only sensor. We I also have some other sensors such as LiDAR, right? So a natural question is, is, is like, can we like, uh, also for the LiDAR perception system, for example, for the autonomous driving like systems. 
So in order to do it, uh, first, what we need to do is we need to see how LiDAR works, right? So the LiDAR sensors fires off an array of laser beams constructive in the horizontal and the vertex directions. And it then captures the light intensity reflecting back and calculates the time of that photons have traveled along each beam. So the distance and the coordinate of the surface point along this beam can be computed. Therefore, uh, we could get the point cloud representation after the um, LiDAR preprocessing, right? So different from like the camera space, which we can like uh, uh, attack the illumination or texture or the shape to for the camera system, right? For the LiDAR preserving system, because it can only capture the shape information, so we cannot like uh, attack the texture to fold it, right? So here is a way we want to manipulate the shape information to attack the LiDAR perceptor system. Okay, cool. We know like uh, what we could manipulate. Uh, then we can design our like loss function. As I mentioned before, we can have two loss. One is advanced loss, which want to fool the machine learning system, and we have perceptual loss, which want to constrain the shape. Right? And then, so this is the, the pipeline which we simulated the autonomous driving pipeline. So we have like object, and uh, we have a lidar which can get the point cloud of like this object, and we fit it into the uh, AV perception model. So here we use the Baidu Apollo's model, which is like uh, open source, like. Uh, real world uh, industry level like uh, uh, autumn driving models and then finally it can we can get the like detection result of this model so here our target goal is not uh, to make the object uh, not detected by the av system so we design our like uh, uh, objective function as follows and similar for the adversity loss uh, we hope to miss the detected bounding box so we can use uh, the uh, advanced loss looks like this one. And also for the perception loss, it's because we want to finally print the 3D object by using 3D printer, right? So we hope the surface of this object as smooth as possible. In this case, it is either for us to use the cheaper like 3D printing equipment to print it. So here we also use the 3D like uh, a distance loss, which is also the total variance loss. The idea is also we want the shift, uh, we want the adjacent vertex to move towards the same directions with the same magnitude. Okay, cool. By doing this, since it seems that we can generate uh, like uh, adversary object, right? But the, the different uh, in the light up perceptor system is uh, it has a lot of like a non differentiable part, uh, which you cannot uh, directly back propagate the adversary gradient from the output of the machine learning models into the input uh, 3D object. So, for example, for the AV perceptor system, it has a lot of like non differentiable pre processing and post processing. So. Uh, in order to do it, uh, we use some like approximation functions uh, to make them differentiable. In this case, we can back propagate the gradient from the uh, input of the machine learning model to the point cloud. And also uh, the gradient from the point cloud to the uh, uh, object is also like uh, um, captured by the LiDAR physical equipment, right? And for this physical equipment, it is also non-differentiable, right? Because this is a LiDAR equipment. So in order to also make the gradient come back propagate from the point cloud to the 3D uh, meshes, we use some like uh, uh, differentiable like uh, renderer to simulate the functionality of the LiDAR to back propagate the gradient. And then by doing all of these things, we can generate an object to attack the uh, LiDAR perceptual systems. So here is like uh, an example. So this is the object which we generate and we put it on the road. And there is a real world autonomous driving cars to scan it. And here is a demo, and we can show that if we put a benign object, the system can detect the bounding box of this object. But if we put our object, uh, all the worst objects in the road, we can see that even though the car is moving towards these things, but the bounding box can still not be detected. So it shows that the LiDAR is also like uh, not really like a safe sensors. It also can introduce adversary behaviors. So we still should uh, uh, study the robust like LiDAR perception system. 
Also, like uh, we can extend it into the uh, sensor fusion like system because for the autonomous driving, finally they use the multi-sensor fusion to serve as the perception module. And here we can like uh, generate an object uh, like a shape object uh, to attack both like uh, 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 camera and uh, like a lidar part. And here is uh, our demo. And uh, this is a binary call and this is the adversary call which we generate. And we can see that uh, uh, if the car, uh, let's see the video. We can see that uh, uh, if the car, if there is a benign cone, the car will stop here because it detected it. The final like uh, uh, model like uh, decision is stop here. But uh, however, if there is an adversary cone, the car can still like uh, uh, go across it because uh, it didn't uh, detect it. So in the real world, it will move towards this object and uh, cause the crash. And also like uh, previously we discussed about like we print a 3D object to fool the LiDAR perception system. And also we can use some like physical equipment uh, like to spoof some like LiDAR point cloud to fool the LiDAR perception system as well. So here the setting is like a re reverse setting. So originally there is no object here, but what we are doing is like we use some physical equipment to spoof some point cloud here. And uh, the car will detect, oh, there is an object, even though there is uh, no object uh, actually. And uh, also like uh, in the reinforcement learning systems, it also vulnerable, we can still generate all those examples. And even in the physical world of this system, we can still generate all those examples. Here is a demo. Uh, we can say that uh, this is like a, a car which we use the reinforcement learning to train this car and the car can go smoothly from the left images, which is like uh, benign images. And here we have like some adversary like object here. And we can say that the, when the car like uh, detects these things, it will move towards it to this like object and the cause the crash. So it shows that uh, uh, in the physical world, even for the deep reinforcement learning systems, it also really vulnerable. Uh, I already discussed a lot about like the attack method. So how to sol solve it? So what is the solution for these things? So next, uh, let's uh, discuss something about like the defense. So actually, uh, okay. So defend against those example is a really hard question. So a brief history of the defense is there is so many paper at the early stage published in the top conference, but after a while, most of them uh, has been like attacked. Uh, and even for the 3D domain, like uh, there is some like defense method also published in the top 10 conference, but it also bro broken like uh, recently. So uh, the aerospace which contains the adversary like uh, phenomena is really large. So it is really hard to have like a really robust system. But uh, how can we solve that? We still want to like have a robust, uh, move towards to the robust like uh, uh, 3D like uh, machine learning system. Right? So here like the adversary training is still the effective way. But uh, in the 3D domain, different from the deep learning for the 2D domain, it has a lot of like uh, difference and a lot of challenges. For example, deep learning for 3D perception models is a relative like a uh, uh, nascent field. It is still an active area of the research to find the proper universal 3D backbones. So unlike in the 2D space, uh, we use like, uh, for example, the convolution network, like the ResNet or some like DeathNet as our backbone. In the 3D domain, they use totally like different like uh, backbones. For example, uh, the three re representative like a model is like the point net, DGCN, or the recent like a point cloud transformer based architectures. And also in the 3D domain, the annotation is really expensive. Take this figure as uh, an example. Different from 2D images, which has texture information could help human to label the images. In 3D domain, for the 3D point cloud, it do not have the texture information, right? So if we only give the label, uh, give the uh, worker to label like uh, this, uh, like uh, box areas, uh, it is uh, really hard for them to recognize, okay, what is the object for these things, right? 
So this also motivated us to study and uh, given these challenges in 3D domain, it motivated us to study and uh, improve the advanced robustness in 3D domain by using the limited like uh, data or label informations. So here, like uh, uh, in this work, we started like why there can leverage the self-supervised like uh, learning to improve the robustness on the 3D domain. So uh, here we we started the self-supervised learning to improve the adversary robustness and also perform a systematic analysis of the adversary robustness in different like three D like uh, uh, architectures like backbones. So in order to start it, we should design the attack strand models, right? So here we select the different attack strand model, such as we shifting the point cloud, we adding the point cloud, or we dropping some like point cloud. So this is three like strand model what we uh, started. And also because we hope to start the self-supervised learning with the robustness, we need to have some like a self-supervised learning pre-task. So here we select three like a representative like a version. One is the 3D rotation, one is the 3D jigsaw, and another is like a auto encoder. So for the 3D rotation, it's like a perform the global change, right? So it uh, directly like change the uh, rotate like the uh, 3D object, the point cloud. However, for the uh, 3D jigsaw, it's like it cut the 3D like point cloud into the different like pieces, and then formulate these pieces to make the machine learning model to predict the order. So this uh, like a uh, pre task uh, can be viewed as involve some like uh, local changes of the like uh, uh, 3D information, right? Uh, so in order to start a how self-supervised learning influences the adversary robustness, here we should start a, like two pipelines. So one pipeline is we call it uh, adversary pre-training for fine tuning, which means that we use uh, self-supervised learning to do the pre-training and then we do the adversary fine tuning. We want to see whether it can improve the robustness. Another setting what we can start is we can do the joint training, right? So we have the 3D self-supervised learning task and we also have the adversary training task and we joint train them to see whether it can improve the robustness. So the result is really interesting. We find that for the adversary print training and fine tuning, it can consistently improve the adversary robustness compared to the pure adversary training like strategies. And also for the 3D jigsaw task, which predicts the permutation of the 3D point cloud patches, can help achieve the stronger robustness than the others. And also for the uh, DGCN like uh, uh, network, which is a convolutional based net network, it can also like achieve the better performance. So this uh, result uh, motivate us uh, that the robust the local features in the 3D like domain can help limit the, the propagation of the adversary effect from the point cloud level like uh, point, point, point level input perturbations to the model final output. So it can help to achieve the better robustness. So it, um, it uh, uh, motivates us to design some like local strategies to improve the robustness of the 3D model. Also another interesting finding what we find is that uh, if we only doing the advancing joint training, it not always like improve the robustness. So, uh, so this is like different from the uh, phenomena in the 2D space, because in the 2D space, uh, uh, even though the uh, self-supervised learning can help model to learn strong priors and contact information, but it is still a separate learning task, right? So in the 2D space, the rotate and the disassemble images still preserve the similar local features to the original images since the RGB value do not change, right? So that the accelerate optimizing in the adversary joint training strategies will not distract the adversary training, but help the model learn the robust global features. However, for the 3D space, for example, for these point cloud models, if we do this rotation or we do this like a jigsaw task, it uh, uh, already changed the uh, vertex uh, like uh, uh, of the uh, point cloud. So it already changed the input information of the input. So it will divide like the 
input into the two distribution. So one is the original point cloud, another is like uh, the like uh, uh, transformation the like uh, point cloud, which transformed by some rotation objects. So, so this is like a two distribution. So if we do the joint training, it is will distract the adversary training result. So it will reduce the performance. Even though here we also use the dual batch normalization, which uh, like uh, uh, suggest, uh, which proposed by the Sahans ADV prop paper, but we found that because here the distribution is uh, like a uh, draft a lot, so it still cannot like improve the result. And also we uh, started the, uh, we performed the transferability studies. So here we have the different like, uh, uh, like uh, self-supervised learning print task. So we generate a voice example for each of them and test on the other like self-supervised learning task. And we found that uh, the um, transferability is not really strong, which means that if we have a voice example, which generate uh, by attacking the uh, model trained by the uh, 3D rotation print task, and uh, it cannot generalize to the other two tasks really well. So it proved it proved the ways to do some like ensemble strategies. So here we do some like ensemble strategies by combining the three tasks, and we find that it can further boost the robustness of the machine learning model. So uh, I hope like this study is paved the ways of the uh, systematic study of the advanced robustness in the three D space. So uh, thanks for all of my like uh, amazing collaborators. And uh, here is also a advanced testament is like uh, we have like host a, a special topic on this uh, frontier journals. We have like uh, trust words machine learning like sections. So if you have any like related paper, welcome to submit to this like uh, uh, journal. Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, anyone has any questions? Okay, great. Uh, thanks, Charlie, for this talk. So for the audience, uh, if you have questions, you can just unmute yourself and bring the question here. Okay, so in the chat, uh, in the chat, I saw uh, Andong Wan bring two questions here. The first question is, are you using the V loading uh, 64 LIDAR? And the second question is, can the LIDAR perturbation be added on the 64 by 1008 data matrix? Do you have any thoughts on the question here? Also here, we use the 16 four lines like LIDAR. So because uh, mm, it can get like uh, much rich information and it also like uh, widely used in the autonomous driving systems. So because it used in the Baidu Apollo system, which is our like uh, targeted systems. Uh, so what is the second question? I didn't uh, hear it clearly. Uh, okay, that is, uh, uh, we have 64 beams. Uh, of later, okay, and each beam may receive a point uh, uh, in three three hundred and sixty degrees, and yeah, um, okay, it, it gets uh, oh, oh, one hundred one thousand and eight hundred points in a circle, okay, yeah. Um, so the the, the matrix is. Uh, formed by 64 beams, and each beam has um, this data uh, in, in the ridges, yes, ridges. Okay. So what is your question? Yeah. My question is, uh, if we add perturbations on the later points in three D dimensions, uh, then it, it seems not very easy to to index to index the points, um, such that uh, nearing neighboring points are near. Okay, okay, uh, it's not easy to index the later points, uh, like uh, image pixels. And uh, if we reform the data in this. Uh, we use the 64 times 
1,800 data, data metrics, then we can reference it uh, or index it uh, somewhat easily, I think. Okay. Oh yeah, so here is like, uh, I think uh, what you are mentioning is about uh, how we implement this like uh, uh, render of the LiDAR, right? So we have yeah, like yeah. more render. And uh, so the implementation is like similar as what you are like just saying that uh, we simulate uh, how the LiDAR works, right? And uh, that way uh, we have some oh. like- yeah. Okay, okay, I understand. To simulate the, the LiDAR, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In this case, like we just like uh, moving the, like uh, vertex positions, but it also like uh, needed to like uh, obey the physical constraints of the LiDAR systems. So in this case, we can like uh, uh, attack the whole pipeline, the whole system. Otherwise uh, it cannot attack it, yeah. Uh, okay, thank you. I have another question. That is, how can you label an obstacle in three data points in your experiments? I, I think it is not very difficult to design such uh, such an uh, application, uh, APP. <laughs> how, how did we uh, label what? Uh, label an obstacle. You see the chat uh, window? Yeah. Uh, label an obstacle in the data points. If we want to detect some obstacle, and then we want to label it. Okay. And how to label the points before our training? Uh, you mean like how can we label the 3D point cloud like uh, before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, in, yeah be, in, for training. Uh, so here the setting is like, uh, so here we, we already have like object, right? And then okay. we already okay. know like, okay, there is like a, uh, we oh, feel- It's it. global position. Okay. Yeah. Yes, yes. It's, it's, it's global position or the truth. Oh, the truth, yeah. uh, I understand. Okay, yeah. okay. And also like uh, here we attack the uh, Baidu Apollo system. So they already like release their model. They can get the bounding box. So we already know the bounding box like uh, positions of this object. Oh, okay, thank you, thank you. Um, hi, uh, thanks for your great talk and I have a question. And in your slide, you show that uh, the attacker can um, use some specific 3D object uh, to avoid uh, the detection of the LiDAR. So I'm curious that uh, um, what knowledge the attacker should know before the attack, such as the type of LiDAR or the model of the LiDAR use or something other. Oh, so here is like, so yes, uh, here we have like different settings. So we also have like a black box settings which we assume that the attacker know nothing information about the uh, machine learning system and uh, we, we cannot get the gradient. But the only thing what we can get is the uh, op uh, output of the machine learning system. And we can find that we can still like successfully attack the LiDAR perceptual system, even the multi-sensor fusion system yeah, in our recent paper. Yeah. Thanks. Great, so is there any other questions? Okay, so I think we're running out of time for, for this lecture. So thanks to Chawi again for, for a great talk. And then we will be moving to our lunch break and we will be returning at 2 p.m. Uh, this afternoon. Uh, thanks everyone and see you soon.